Hello, 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 hello. My name is Bruce Lombardo, and this is my only hands account. So, tonight we're discussing something that we haven't discussed as of yet, the five of us together, and our fifth member will be along shortly. Our friend Jade is on a family leave, or FL, family leave of absence, uh, and we, we hope things get better for you, Jade. Uh, we understand. Great. Mm -hmm. For the Crafting Gamer, hello, sir, and Flady, evening. What's up, TCG? Flady. So you'll see that I have my friends with me, Shadow, Chimerian, and Baron G-Rock. And later, we'll have Connell stumbling in here because that's what Connell does. Gentlemen, how are you tonight? Not too shabby. Pretty good. Excellent. Excellent. Amazing. I'll be doing that in just a few minutes once I get my hands to where they can wiggle. What happened to your hands? Uh, I sweat out my body weight today, and I'm trying to get potassium and magnesium back in me and flow. I almost went and grabbed a Vlasic pickle, but I'm like, eh, let me see what I can do here for the moment. I ate before the stream, so I didn't obviously drink enough. Okay. Baron? Yeah. You dominated our topic tonight. We're going to be discussing uh, necromancy used in a good campaign. I'm just going to ask you if you ever got into uh, the Scarred Lands campaign. I did not. Did you ever read Fire Sea by, we by Weiss and Hickman? No. Okay. Then I will be pulling from those sources of inspiration tonight. As, a, as well as we should. Okay. Shadow, how are you? Doing great. Fantastic. Kai. You're not you're you're not typing out two hundred characters or less in a furious anger and righteous indignation like you were last night. They need to up the amount of room you have in YouTube chat. But I knew if I, I didn't want to log on because I didn't want no. But yes, so much, so much typing. Yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that, and I was kind Where of was this? last night. I wasn't, I wasn't mentally prepared for last night. I went in, and I could not get myself psyched. I, I, I was sucking on coffee beans. I could not get myself ready to tear into that that topic, which I love. But what? Well, I where, where was this, guys? On the gatekeepers last night. Link was in uh, the Table Breakers chat and in numerous spots in the Gatekeepers Discord. How did I miss that? Yeah, it was Rogues. It, it, that's how it was Rogues. That's That was yesterday. Today's new. Today's different. Today's not that. Today, today we're, we're not going to discuss that. We'll do. We'll save, we'll save our fury for, for, for Saturday night when we can melt steel beams. Yes. <laughs> Jet fuel can't melt still beams. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Kai. <laughs> Flady, it's okay, man. I was I was fatigued yesterday as hell. And I was I was pushing because I wanted Jade to know that we'd try to be doing that uh, the rogues in the campaign, because I've been getting answers and questions, more questions than anything else. And uh thought I'd I'd do that topic. Next time I do that, next time I hijack a gatekeepers, we'll be talking about Domain play rogues. Oh, there was an actual show last night? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was canceled. Nope. Uh if 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 you go into the gatekeeper's chat, I mean we we talk about it and I, I kind of outlined what I want to do. I want to do like mostly before name level rogues. And it didn't have to be centric to Dungeons and Dragons, but I, I I ran as best as I could. I was feeling it yesterday. I was just, oh. And then today, like, I'm still putting my fluids back in. So. No, sorry, I couldn't join in. I had to, uh, you know, as I do a radio show a couple of times a week, sometimes I had already, I, I thought we weren't doing a show, so I, 
instead of doing a, a, a pre-record, we did a live. We did it live. <laughs> I think there's a there's a clip out there about that. Hold Maybe. on. No. 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 <laughs> what? What? It's only Bill O'Reilly. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we all seen it. We know it. It's as my as my regular jokes. I love I love that's the only time I've ever said. I love Bill O'Reilly because I thought he was seriously gonna like come after his fucking backstage crew. I really did. Everything sucked. Uh, <laughs> okay, go ahead, Baron, take it over. All right. So tonight we're gonna be talking about necromancy and the use of it in a good campaign. So uh with uh with all of this here, uh I've got a few uh, questions I did come up with and I'm going to go ahead and start with the the uh, originator and creator of his own only hands account, Bruce. Uh, so when you have a necromancer in your good campaign, what is the source of his magic? Where does where 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 does it come from? Where does it where does it come from? Where does it go? You know, you could, you, we, we've got multiple paths on here. Yeah, exactly. Multiple answer question. This is like a ge geometry question. Um, we could go the simple route of I am a cleric in a service of a god that favors work. And sometimes the body will cease and I will bring that body back so it can work further. And therefore, you have a, a neutral or maybe a misguided good god that wants to see people fulfill their their tasks and you as a cleric are given a modicum of that power to keep things rolling to keep things pushing and i like that i like that idea quite a bit what i like better than that though is i like a caster that loves the necromantic schools and he looks at every one of you as your parts. You are parts for later. Right now, you work just fine. Later on, I might need you because you might be the cure for cancer. I don't know yet. And that might not be exactly a, a good campaign. Flady, wow. That's hilarious. <laughs> but, but... Three of those are puppeteered by the other one. Oh, my bad, my bad. Anyway, um, I, I think I think a necromancer that's in service of good is is basically just like any other white mage or any other arcane caster, to where they put their foci into assembling parts that were previously used in another creature, and they will sometimes assemble bones and tendons and tissue into something new like a undead homunculus or they will instead grab a corpse and be like i need you to work and they animate that or they have that put to use and march it down to the, the lab at the college and then they pull the, the energy out and then they can take all the the things they need like oh well here's 17 feet of good small intestine here's eight feet of good large intestine Here's some burned tissue. Can you can you do anything with that there, cleric? All right, fine. Throw it in the, throw it in the bin. I'll do something with that later. As long as it doesn't all deteriorate. Somebody get the fly spray out again. They're coming back. Sorry, Blaine. <laughs> I'm laughing at it. Don't worry. I I I I just that's how I see it. And the necromancer is never really like a lawful good. He thinks. He's, you know, using the laws to do the most good, beneficial work. But, man, he's, he's got some, some real issues going on. And he doesn't, he doesn't even look at, like, women as objectively, I can use these to breed more parts. He, he, he just, like, I'll use you right now. <laughs> he, he does things like that. So I like 
how we can use either divine magic or arcane magic, depending on how your campaign is focused for a necromancer. I would prefer to use arcane users, but in a divine campaign, uh, I'll, I'll go with uh, Midgard and majority of Nordic systems or Nordic settings. They use hell. Hell is a mistress that she has all the bodies, all the souls, and she will return one back to you whenever you've been a good boy or good girl and you pray for it with one of your uh, casted spells and you get a, a item. Maybe you get a zombie or a skeleton or maybe you get like a specter or a wraith to help do your job. And then they're returned whenever those are reduced to zero hit points. Okay. Hi. What about you? What what type of what, what kind of magical background or reference do you, do you like to have your necromancers in a good campaign? At this point, looking at it, I tend to go, I tend to go with this one being more of a look at trying to to instead of the pure evilly necromancy thing, trying to go more with the route of treating it on a more academic schedule uh, I point of view where you're looking at it as it's a cult you know yeah we're kind of looking at it as a cultural thing you don't you, we're just really at it it's really ultimately animating an object like see it's it, they're dead they're no longer a person they're an object <laughs> and we're recycling and using the object that but it's a body no the bot, it, it, it's a person. No, the person is dead. I am using the, but what about intelligent undead? That is a whole other point of philosophy and, and ethics. We have a board of ethics involved here. We d consult them. But necromancy morally is bankrupt? People. You're morally bankrupt? Yes, but we're not. Um, so you have, but it all com also comes down to the, uh, what forces are being used for the purposes of that so if you're using like you know it's one of those things where if i'm running it, it, it's a whole i i it really comes down to are you asking a dark god for for the you know the, the dark lord of the pit for the ability to reanimate to, to forcefully reanimate this corpse that's more than what people go that's kind of evil he's glowing green with necrotic energy yeah that's probably evil but hey I use the power of pure mana without having to ask for a dark god to animate this corpse and well, don't worry about it. It's grandpa. Grandpa wants to help me. That's right, grandpa. Go move that go move that cart. That's right. You would you you didn't leave me an inheritance. You were kind of worthless in life, but you'll but but she'll pull my cart in death and and hold the field. I don't care at this point. So, so like, oh man, that guy, he, like you were, a, you were of no value in life, but should be of value in death. And that's how, the, and that's how it's like, it would be more just the application of what, of what spheres and what power sources your paradigm operates with as though you're, I, as you're animating that corpse, make it do whatever you want. And hopefully you're smart and you animate it as a skeleton and not a zombie. So we don't deal with the, with the stench. So that way the, you know, it ejects that disgusting flesh body mech that it was driving and, and it embraces pure skeleton powers and which is which is far superior to zombie flesh unless you're looking to create more zombies but we don't want more zombies we want controlled numbers and we would prefer you to animate non-intelligent undead because because yanking somebody from the afterlife and putting them back into their body and forcing them to be corrupted to your will that's kind of that's kind of ethically bad, and we might have to go in front of the ethic community. I'm bored. Who's the ethics board? Paladins. Oh no. Inquisitors. Yeah. <laughs> Paladins. It's like a, it's like a, like. Please go for the captain's mass. At which point, at which point, there's, a, there's just simply a paladin, an inquisitor, and a cleric who's just saying, "Like, we're going to fucking rape you. We already, we've already made our decision. You get no argument, but you can present evidence if you want." Oh. Punishment already is uh, already determined beforehand. So the board of ethics is definitely a whole lot meaner than, our, than the real world, where he's like, "Oh, you've been disbarred. You're no longer uh, no, 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 no." This is a lot more um, uh, death. Uh, <laughs> we have a we have a dish ballin over there who will happily um, evaporate your uh, your body now. And yeah, I, I know it's kind of rambling, but that's cool. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, Shadow. I, I, before we oh, go oh. to Shadow real quick, when you say the green energy, I am reminded of a movie from 2009. I believe it was called Nine. It was like a claymation CGI movie. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to look for it and throw it to you, uh, Baron, so you can see I it. I was thinking of the sure. Lochnar myself. Yeah. Lochnar, that works. My Lochnar, you stupid bitch. Lochnar is pretty badass. Yes. The B-17 sequence is my favorite part. The entire Actually, movie. Use an alien goo, which is very reminiscent of that color. Yeah, Necrons, green. <laughs> the, the the Shadow Clan love Necrons. As a matter of fact, I just finished painting the uh, Necron tomb ship from Battlefleet Gothic. Awesome, very very awesome. Right now, I'm building a Necron army right now for the abuse to abuse poor people with. So yeah, not cheap stuff, man. No, we'll talk not. later. Yeah, I know. But but it's undead, and Necrons are undead. And they get up. <laughs> that they are. And they're good, according to their beliefs. Hey, hey, Trace in the Infinite is a great character. <laughs> you should love him. I didn't say I didn't. I know. But if anyone who doesn't know, just know, Trazen is the best character in all of 40K. There's no arguing there. Oh man, Eisenhorn, really, dude. Ah, uh, Kane, Commodore Kane. <laughs> Commodore anyway, Kane. Can... Yes, Commodore Kane. Yeah. Oh. All right, Shadow. Yeah, your turn. Can you where, 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 in, when you're running a good campaign and you have someone who wants to be in there for the next week. Where where do you allow them, or how do you explain their where the magic comes from? That they're oh, well, one, is one it, I is it a it because uh, it's evil? Um, now, before I get into it, there are some necromancy spells that that aren't inherently evil, but a good portion of them are. So th there's there's a potentiality for someone to. Uh, not necessarily specialize in necro necromancy, but still use it. If they want to go full on necromancer, they're going to slide into neutral and then eventually evil. And I'm going to probably let them know that that's 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 going to be a thing. Uh, raising the dead and things like that. I just uh, I, I don't allow resurrect to begin with, so they're already going against all of the social and religious norms that I would have in my game. So there's really not going to be a lot of it. But I've seen people try, try to skirt that, you know, walk that fine line, you know, using mostly things like speak with dead and uh, a, a couple of the almost healing spells of the old, uh, you know, AD and D. Mind you, I don't, I don't play a lot of, you know, uh, Pathfinder or 3.5. So... It, it, it's pretty cut and dried, it, it, you know, for the old school games. And for the most part, if my players want to be a necromancer, they're in my evil campaign and they just they just run with it. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be an evil necromancer. I, I, I know everybody's going to be against me, but I'm still going to try my best to, to, you know, be the evilest necromancer around or the most powerful or or the only. All right, to kind of ex expound on that. So you so in your campaigns, you don't allow any type of resurrection, reincarnation, none of that? Oh, okay. Um, player characters will never get the resurrect spell, and the only way to get a resurrect is through usually like the potion of life, and on a rare occasion I gave out a wand of resurrection or rod, which has X number of charges, but the gods aren't going to come in and bring you back to life because – they want you up upstairs with them to fight the big battle at the end of time kind of thing. There's, you know, uh, there, there's no reason for them to, to bring you back to life. The, you know, uh, a lot of times I've seen the trope where, where the players are, you know, working for the gods, but for the most parts, the gods don't need the players. I, I have a different view on the gods. They're, 
they're badass enough. They don't need the players. They're just toying with them. And I, I also don't have the uh, the trope where, where the gods don't want to start a war because they kind of do in my games. They want to start a war. And I've ran several god wars that have been a lot of fun for the players because I get them involved sometimes uh, at least twice. I've let them actually play the parts of the gods and go at each other PvP style so that, you know, they, they can actually, you know, uh, have kind of a stake in it as opposed to the the idea that the, uh, the, the gods are trying to keep the peace. None of that. They, they, they oh. want, you, the, the evil gods want to stir stuff up and, you know, maybe the good gods would rather not, but, you know, if you haven't, you know, actually run a really good God War, I highly suggest you you at least try it once, get it out of your system, or run with it for a good long time if you can. So, but you just you, you kind of just did a, a double switch on that. So you said that the gods want them up there to fight the war at the end at the right. at the very end, right? But but they should know when the very end's coming. So what's the difference if they come today or if they come in 10 years? That, uh, that, that kind of. Uh, okay. Well, what, what, well, you mean like in their mortal body or, or in their, you know, spiritual form in the afterlife? Well, well, you were saying that, that the gods don't, you know, uh, don't really give out the resurrection or the, or anything like that because they right. want them up there to fight the war at the end. Right. Well, but they're kind of on that that heartbeat of when it, that's going to be. So if that's not going to be for a thousand years, what's the difference between taking them that day as opposed to in like 20, 30 years? Well, because I'm trying to if, if I'm going that route, I'm trying to accelerate it like within the year, not decades later on down the road. If I'm going that route, you know, if the characters actually make it to anything like, you know, above 10 15th sort of level then the campaign's running toward some sort of big dukeroo at the end so it, it, the end is nigh one way or the other okay okay I, I was just i was just trying to wrap my head around yeah, that I mean, of, of what, because because you kind of went this way and then you you, you yeah, jerked I, I, over I, here i'm like it should have been a little bit more specific <laughs> trying to, try to be uh brief so that we could get on yeah. the next one yeah. So okay. So you know, in in in, and you actually brought, kind of brought up uh, a good segue into the next question. Uh, what ahead. type? What? No, actually, because this is I, I went off of the. Oh. I, I'm scrapping the questions I had because half of them didn't make sense after I was reading through them again. Um, That's okay. So, so, what is the moral framework? that needs to be there for good necromancy. Well, I assume you mean, uh, you know, how could you get away with it kind of thing? Yeah, like the ethical guidelines, you know, things along those lines. I guess it's going to have to go by, you know, because I, I use uh, alignments. So depending on uh, the campaign, because sometimes it's the lawful good gods that are, you know, uh, at the head of the food chain, so to speak. But I've run other games where it's the neutral good, uh, because I actually think that's actually more good than lawful good. But I'm not going to get into that. But depending on the tenets of one of the three good alignments, that would probably come into play for what would uh, keep you from going into the neutral alignments by your actions. You know, if you start doing certain things that, that go against your, so let's say, lawful good, Ten Commandments or, or whatever you have, then you, you, you could be straying and, or, you know, uh, versus neutral good, which is, just in my opinion, just more of a pure good, uh, law and chaos. You know, be damned. Do what, what is overall the best good. And if you're just speaking with the dead, or using some of the gathering spells, or 
or things like that to, to bring people back, you know, and heal them kind of thing, uh, then you're not strained. But as soon as you start raising an undead army, you're, you're, you know, you're moving into the evil alignments. Okay. So, yeah, give, give me a, like a, a kind of a, a, something that you've done before where, where you've had that kind of line where the, the players almost crossed it or something like that. Give, give, give me, I need something a little bit more out of you. So, so to be honest, you know, like I said, my players are either, uh, if they're a wizard and they come across some of the necromancy spells, they're going to use the ones that, that don't push them over without, you know, like I said, you know, getting a warning. Hey, you start animating dead. That's, you know, going toward neutral. If you keep using that as like one of your regular spells per day kind of thing, you're definitely going to be switching over, you know, moving one of those alignments into the evil category. But if you're just, you know, I, I think it was, uh, what was that spell? It was a gathering spell that helped you uh, bring the pieces back so that then you could do a healing spell. And I think Death's Door is another necromantic, necromantic spell that doesn't quite go into the raising of dead where uh, it's like the mostly dead spell. Are you familiar with the old version of Death's Door where, you know, if you're like negative, yep. whatever, you're not really dead. You just brought up the one hit point, that kind of thing. Or the speaking with dead is a real... Uh, easy one to get away with because you're not you know bringing anybody's body back to to do your bidding uh, as opposed to laying them to rest properly i think there's also uh I, I could be mistaken a couple of spells that are geared around uh laying people to rest properly or or uh you know put, putting their soul at ease if they're uh you know, uh, like a, a ghost or a banshee or something like that. And, yeah, the, 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 there's really a, a pretty fine line for me what constitutes, you know, crossing over into the evil alignments versus the good. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, for you, what, what are some of the, the moral framework uh, for good necromancy that you have in your game. Okay, I'm only going to focus now on just one of the kingdoms that I run for in the world in my game that I, I, that I work with. By the way, it's the same kingdom that technically you guys are part of for my one shot, two shot. Who knows what how long it's going to last? It, every yearly shot. Um, we had I we have a very strict system of of application for how we operate with them. I. I See, I have my necromancers do under I now because of the fact that I do have multiple forms of how necromancy works to arcane divine because divine well you gotta like we can usually figure out which I you know where you're drawing your power from by how you dress how you act what gods you're praying to you know when the when the magistrati I when, when the magistrati my GC are sitting here watching you during your um, your acts of proof that you're worthy of being certified as a spellcaster and you know you're invoking you're invoking the dark god fu lang or calling upon the power you know the powers of the various um you know high level demons of malpheus to come out there and serve you we kind of understand that's evil but if you're calling on you know live you know through your acts through your proof your and your research to go and say because you know every spell does have it that vote that verbal the invocation part that we can usually determine how uh, if you're good or not. So the divine casters are easy to sort to, to sort out, and the code of ethics is simply: Did your god actual like? Uh, did the god you prayed to actually give you the give you that power? And because of the fact that you are I uh, you are under a board of a board you know almost your almost like the doctoral thesis I I board that's to prove that you're actually worthy of your PhD. And you have and you have like six or seven casters who are all watching you to make sure you're right. And one commissar, I one commissar with I with an anti magic pistol, ready to shoot you if you're not. And so therefore, after you like, I therefore you you have to fool not just one caster but a board of six 
you're going to probably not I uh, not succeed in, in tricking that no I'm actually a dark god you know dark god worshiping under a good thing so as so you're, I think at that point you're now you I divine now certified arcane is going to be a whole lot more application you know how you're doing it your application explain to the to your board of I to your board of arcane and arcane casters the warlocks get a whole lot more um watched over to make sure that they're doing things properly alchemy is just simply re like the alchemists are out there just out there reanimating corpses and at that point you're now under the the rules of of you're now certified here's your license here's your passport if you don't prove that you're actually following the rules of your of your licenses certification rating we you're going to be um arrested and probably stilled so therefore you, i cut off from all magic and pretty much locked with anti-magic bracelets that you'll never cast a day a day in your life again and if you remove those bracelets you uh, you die so those are your options we either shoot you now or or take away your ability to spell cast forever do i get to retrain my class no you're still you're still a level eight wizard you just have those bracelets that you can never take off i'm gonna flee the country ah, ha, 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 ha. the moment you, the moment you leave the, the I, I you leave the country and the, the border guards are look at you and see that you're a spellcaster trying to flee with your anti-magic bracelets. They're going to shoot you on sight. Good luck escaping co- I, I'm, I'm this wonderful, wonderful totalitarian state that we hate all spellcasters with. And, you, and there is a board of ethics that does actually state what you use, your, I, what it's used for, and you must maintain your yearly updates. Then and, and register. I, I register all undead that are that, uh, that are operating. Plus, uh, I am plus we I, we have regular I regular contact with gods of the I with the various spirits of the over uh, of the afterlife who I who are kind of going. Hey, um, we're missing approximately a hundred souls who are uh, who were supposed to be in I in processing for. You know the afterlife, but some some rogue necromancer is currently running around reanimating the um, intelligent undead and forcefully pulling them out of the afterlife. Could you help us hunt them down? And then you know, adventuring occurs, which usually ends up with a with a necromancer who's doing his job, you know, evilly being shot. So there, so we have a board of ethics, but it's very strictly enforced by a rather large celestial bureaucracy and a military who's. Very enthusiastic because over over across the sea, like from one shore, you can actually see the black hole into a demon realm full of um, full of horrors that we can just go. Yeah, we don't want any of that here. And then we all go to another place and find a pit full of, gl- of glowing green stuff and horrible necromantic energies corrupting souls and forcing them back into their bodies. And we go, we really don't want that either. And then somewhere else, we have it. I, I, we have an entire city of undead. Who are ruled by a powerful lich, and we go, we don't want that here either. And so you could look out across the world and find three or four major outbreaks of the undead and horrible influences. Going, we don't want any of that anywhere. So therefore, the moment so this, I want to use the, I want to use like, I understand that we are under a population crunch and we don't have enough bodies to be able to do all the manual labor. We need a force multiplier, a, a force multiplier for our workers. To do mundane, t- uh, easy tasks, necromancers. Yes. Do you want to have a job? Yes. Do you want to work for your uh, I for a living? Yes. You want to cast? I love a cast. Good. I need you to raise up the undead in this area. But isn't that horrible? They already died. They're they're, I, they're living. Use of the list is gone. We need you to do manual labor. Raise the undead to plow fields. Clear. And clear wrecked cars off the road. That's, we, that's all we need. And if you do anything wrong, we'll kill you. I understand. Good. Now go on with your. I, I go on with your day. Good. Good day, citizen. I'll check with you. I, I'll check with you I, I, at the end of your shift. And that would be how most of the, how most of that kingdom works. It's a weird. You. Ut- I completely. I don't want to say utilitarian, but pragmatic group of individuals who realize that they're uh, they're down to less than a a million and a half souls to run the, to, to run a vast ruined MI uh, ruined kingdom of people who don't have a lot of spare bodies to throw away 
because there just aren't enough people who are actually civilized. And by, according to the uh, to the Bison Surins, anybody who's not Bison Surin and who isn't part of an established country that pays taxes and is a uh, is a barbarian. And we don't like barbarians here in our country. Thank you very much. You heard them. No, no foreigners. No barbarians. Hey, we have a bunch of whack jobs across the ocean who are religious, uh, who, uh, who are religious zealots who come marching across, who come sailing across the sea uh, every four to five years to raid us because they want their holy city back. But that holy city is our holy city too, motherfucker. And no, you can't have it back. But we no, because you're all, I uh, you're all magic using, I uh, using barbarians. We don't trust you because you don't have control over your magic. Blam 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 blam. blam, blam. Oxy, wait 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 wait. Isn't that an oxymoron? Barbarians with magic. Woo, no. Oh no, no no. Sa savages can use magic. Druids use. I mean, druids exist. Uh, I all you gotta do is be an uneducated twit who prays to a god, and suddenly you've got magic. I'm Catholic. So, yeah. I don't have. Wait wait wait. Hold on. I'm Catholic, but I don't have magic. Yeah, but we don't live in a world where all you gotta do is pray to your god. And, I, I, I pray to your god at, at dawn, and suddenly you have magic spells. Where's my I, magic? It doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, but on, well, congratulations. You didn't take cleric or shaman or warlock. All, all around us. Yeah. I want to so, grow up to be a paladin. You, you don't have that many orange. Yeah, you got to grow up first. Yeah, you just you get a magical staff infection, so that way you can have it. Uh, I your midichlorians. Did you? Um, I want to hear more about this portal of horrors. Uh, por portal of horrors. Not no, portal I heard horrors. horrors. Damn it! I mean, you, I, you need to get I your did, ears checked then. Yeah, I also need to speak clear. But yeah, here, don't worry about it. But no, I mean, I actually have like a. Like an entire rule document for the Magistrati I'm a GC for literally how to um, I I manage and shoot all of your um, all your spellcasters and then religious zealots and then mages who are, who think themselves way too high on themselves, magic tech unregistered magic tech users and so many other people. This is a very close minded society of individuals who are who are noticeably have a cultural PTSD um, case from, from from rampant mage kings and. And psychopaths are spellcasters. So yeah, they tend to shoot people. So yeah, I do have a very strict code of I code of ethics for necromancers and everybody else. All right. So uh welcome the cigar DM to our to to the show. Sorry, uh, I had to go be a parent. That's okay. Parenting does uh does trump other things. As, so, as long uh, as you're not being a parent at a coffee meetup. And you know, she's no, I wasn't flattered. dropping off a load of kids at the coffee meetup. <laughs> uh, so since since you hopped in here, uh, uh, and everything else, like I said, we were talking about, uh, of course, necromancy. Uh, what is some of the, the, the moral framework for good necromancy in your campaigns? You know, like, uh, ethical guidelines. You know, uh, things along those lines. You know, you say ethical guidelines, and I just think about the people I game with, and I don't think the two compute. Um, I don't raise the dead. I don't like it. Don't make me do it. Um, but uh, I don't really do. No, if somebody approaches me with, "Hey, I want to play a." Uh, true neutral uh, necromancy because I don't see them ever really being good, but that not because you're a bad guy doesn't make you a bad guy. So it'd be true. Our alignment would have to be true neutral, for, for my opinion, uh, very much in the gray zone. Um, and it really depends on what they're going to they're bring back from the dead. Yes, uh, if it is gabos. Um, you know, less sentient beings. Yes, I say gobbles are less sentient. They pick their nose. They pick their friend's nose. And if you can't pick your friend's nose, then there's no friend of yours. Anyways, um, just go with it. So I would say yes, but the list of things they can bring back from the dead, I, I wish I could do Vincent 
uh, Price's voice. I really do. I, this is one be a great moment for it. Uh, not so much thriller, but maybe fly. But that's besides the point. I've had coffee, 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 coffee. coffee. Anyways, um, I, there would be a list of things would be on the OK list, and a lot of things are not on the OK list. Uh, no, you cannot bring back humans. You cannot bring up. I'm sorry that Sarah, you know, lost her three year old child because it got hit by a cart. No, you cannot take it to the uh, pet cemetery. That will not be allowed. No, we're not going to do this. But you could bring back Fido. Um, that also ends badly. What? That also ends badly. <laughs> it, it's a cat. It, it just saying it's it a becomes cat. it becomes Cujo. I'm not necessarily. You could have a you could have a you could have a fine Frankenweiner like they did in a Disney movie. Yeah. Um, Disney's really not real life. Disney is, well, I've been to the kingdom. It's down that way for crazy people. Anyways, uh, I am really sorry. I'm highly bouncy today. Um, but no, there will be. You sure be, that was sugar in your coffee? No, it was, it was, uh, it was cocaine, but that's besides the point. Uh, no, 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 no sugar. No sugar. Drugs are bad, kids. Um, there we go. That was so much better. Wow. <laughs> I can feel my blood pressure lowering. <laughs> Ethically and morally, I don't think really applies to the concept of necromancy. Uh, morally, it could be shot down. Ethically, uh, only if it's a third world country, you can bring them back for as a workforce. That's fine. We're, we're okay with that. Uh, but in game, no humans. I will, uh, if you want to bring back a monster, that's fine. You want to bring back Fido. As long as it's not Cujo, that's awesome. But there is a hard line. There is very much a hard line. I've yet to have anybody in my campaign say, hey, guess what? I want to play a Necromancer because normally the answer would be uh, uh, no, but thank you for playing the game. Because in most scenarios, I imagine even Shadow will agree with this, Necromancy is evil. There's no workaround. It's just evil. And I don't like running evil campaigns. Mark this, mark this in your record books, folk, on your calendar. Yes, we did agree on something. But I would let somebody play as long as they go by the list of what they can be and understand that their character is true neutral. They're not the bad guy, but they're sure as hell not the good guy. They're not the good guy. The they're not the bad guy. They're just the guy. The guy. <laughs> All right, Bruce. What type of moral framework do you have in a for good necromancy? Um, the ethical makeup of necromancers is kind of a challenged one. You walk a worse line as a good necromancer than you do as a as a young paladin. Young paladins don't make it to be old paladins most of the time either. In a proper campaign, most of the time they lose it between fourth and seventh level. Sorry, <clears throat> lust gets to you. you. You're you're a young kid, maybe twenty six years old at most, probably, but you'll do things, and that just that there goes your paladin head. It's gone, and most players don't have the wherewithal to to atone. So, uh, the the ethical dilemma within all of the uh, all of the characters for necromancy that are on the good side it really there there's a a couple things that would have to be put in play like in hollow Fost, somebody really liked what they read with the first few novels of uh jim butcher and so you have the floating skulls that will go around and just dispense knowledge and whenever they observe you in your laboratory and you're doing something probably not a good necromancer would do. They start telling you, like, I'm not going to report you, but I would like you to stop. <clears throat> I really heavily suggest that you don't cast that next spell on the recipe. I want you to, to actually tone it down a little bit and uh, let's bury that corpse and let it rest. What you're doing is wrong. There's only one thing that you you've got a recipe of spells that you're going to bring back this this person that you loved, 
and your heart's really not in it for the greater good. You're you're being selfish right now. Stop it. And then they eventually start talking to each other by going to the window, making the window open, and then the skull flies outside and guards, guards. <laughs> That's why you need a 10 pound. I have a bunch of bobs. And basically, it's elder spirits with a lot of necromancy magic knowledge, a lot of a lot of knowledge in it. I only played in that campaign like three or four times. I bought the book. The book uh, was really good. Don't remember much of the the description of the skulls, but there were elder spirits in the town that were helping focus the white college of necromancers and that was how the dm interpreted it and it worked out really good for us because we actually were able to stay on task with things we were able to do good things with that campaign now see one one point i think we kind of miss with this is the when you're looking at a good campaign for with necromancy in it is not necessarily raising the dead, but is granting a peaceful rest to the departed and or being able to provide the guidance and wisdom that they had at one time in order to preserving, you know, the history. So for instance, that 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 great wizard that lived, you know, 50 to 1,000 years ago, you know, he had some amazing things that, that he did that actually helped with defenses uh, of the great cities or something like that and how they were put into into the, the being. You know, looking at, at some of the, the uh, moral framework of that, that could be another way that that is actually put into it. Uh, Hi, you had your your finger up. Yes, um, the closest to that I can actually say is is that you need to look at say. Now the problem here is that you're looking at, at that point at like spirit speakers, those who are summoning the, like ancestors. In other games, those are not really under the necromancer category, because you because usually at that point you're just drawing the ancestor back for a short amount of time to, pro to provide wisdom, and at that point it's not truly an a, I, but in that, like, I think that did that really well is Legend of the Five Rings, where you actually have an entire, an entire branch of Shugenja whose entire thing is summoning, is summoning ancestors to do work for you again, to be the guides, to be the, but the thing is, because of the fact that they are not reanimating a corpse, they're not really considered necromancers. Yes, there are necromancy spells because D&D &D has some of the most ignorantly retarded na I, I am naming and categorization for magical spells because I don't know who the fuck was was a I was a brain dead genius who came up with the schools of necrom I the schools of magic and then allocated every spell like almost like a dartboard into what um what spell is what and because the, because some guy in Wisconsin arbitrarily threw darts at a board and said this is what things are we are now trapped 40 years later with having to say, uh, raise dead as a, I, I bring back, you know, my friend recently died and might still be alive. I, and with a little bit of help, I can repair the body and bring back to life, but it's somehow still a necromancy spell. I, and why it's, and why they're not necromancers, why your, why your help, why your friendly neighborhood cleric is now a necromancer, but they are. And but I, L5R did a, I did that really really well. Exalted did it really well. There's ways of that, that that you can like you know summon dead souls back in other games to speak with them and be and all of them are necromantic. But are you really a necromancer? And because necromancers are tend to be I looked at I bring you know I'm binding a soul back to the you know unwillingly back into its body. And, and bringing it back to life, intelligent undead, or I'm just reanimating a corpse and having a bare echo of its original soul, now a twisted damn, I, creature in damnation, 
doing my I uh, doing my will and bidding forever as a as a low paid wage I I wage slave to beat the crap out of people who I don't like because I can't afford golems, and this is how I'm doing my job. But the thing is, is that when you look at L five R with I with I with ancestor spirit work, that t there's a lot of rituals on how to do it properly because if you do it wrong, you're offending the sp the your, the, your spirits, you're affecting the ancestors. So it's, there is, in that game is already a rigid framework in place on how you got to do it right so you don't have an, an angry, vengeful ancestor showing up there and going, you know, and it's because, you know, when you're going to, you know, to, to the ancient temple to go pray to the ancestors, it's pretty much Mughal, uh, I, that scene from Mulan where all your ancestors are going to pop up and go, I don't even like this guy. Someone's going to answer him. Oh, fine, I'll go down there and take care of it. Hi there. Uh, I Hi there, whoever you are. I see that you're my great 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 grandchild on my on my um, third brother's side. Uh, I'm here to help you, and it, it, you know it, there's ways to make it work and how to make it interesting. But like I said, but most people would look at that and go, "No, that's to that's totally okay." Meanwhile, Bob over the I Bob in the black robes over there sitting here going, "Dark powers grant me the ability to to," and then you know, so somewhere in the uh, uh, somewhere in the shadow realm. You know, hell's looking up going, wait a moment. What are you doing? I'm bringing, no, that's my soul. I, mine now. Mm, oh, I'm angry now. That's one of mine. And now you got problems or you made a, or, you know, you paid the, you paid her a toll, aka the obsidian gem you needed to, to let, let the dark god, the under, uh, gods of the underworld give you the ability to borrow, uh, I borrow a body for a few, for a few centuries. Well, you know what? Y'all end up in my, it, I'm, in my dumpster of death anyway so what what's a few extra centuries and it's like in a long enough marathon you all lose uh, <laughs> and yeah it's just one of those things where i'm just kind of sitting back and going i'm sorry i just jumped in like that so that's just that's my, okay that's okay uh, shadow you had also had a, a point you wanted to make on there Oh, just that I, I, I did actually mention the, the putting of souls to rest and, you know, getting them, you know, to get rid of the banshees and, you know, ghosts and things like that by, you know, laying their soul to rest, uh, being in the purview of potentially necromancers and being a, a, a good way to use some of the necromancy spells. No big deal. Okay. You oh, know, I think banshees... You bring up banshees, and I'm thinking of the original concept of a banshee from Celtic uh, mythology, and boy, did they get bad rap. They're supposed to warn the family that someone dear to them is about ready to die. Now you want to kill the messenger, or basically not unkill, well, take the messenger out of the situation. But we got whippoorwills. They did the same thing, Tom. Yeah. All right. So... That's an argument for a different day. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that probably, you know, maybe around Halloween. We'll dig into ghosting and things like that. You know. Right. Uh, the, uh, let's see here. Bruce, start off with you. So who would actually, what type of either organizations or people would in your type of your campaigns and things like that practice good necromancy what organizations would practice good necromancy or okay. or persons persons or organizations the majority of individuals that would do such a thing would probably be allied with either a church or a college one or the other depending on how uh, their their magic is derived that would kind of be the helping deciding factor are they arcane or are they divine but even a church would probably hire on uh, a white necromancer in a society where arcane might help you know the the, the spirit and help the body and uh, you would have a, a, a group of wizards together like a guild that would actually partake in the information sharing and they would make sure that they would transact with other individuals 
that were of the same mindset or at least on the same problems, the quantitative problems that they're all trying to solve. And I would see that I would see that to where you would have to have like an organization that would have the money to be doing such work. So it's not going to be like there's seven of us and we hang out at a bar and we never actually do work together. No, 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 no. There's probably like 10 or 12 bards or wizards or more than likely clerics or priests that they would be part of a church that they would take place and involve with these things. I would see that. I would see that type of individual uh, grouping for them. Like uh, the exorcists or um, potentially inquisition of that particular church, maybe? Possibly. Okay. That would be my answer. Okay. Oh, so, okay. So we, we got that. Uh, Connell. What about you? In your in your uh, in your campaigns that you would run, or uh, in a world that you have, uh, what you know specific you know orders, religious sects, or individuals would you know practice this good necromancy? There would probably be a church. I, I there are yeah. several. I mean, we've already did a video on how to make divinity in your campaigns. I think on gatekeepers, uh, not, not table breakers. I know we did in gatekeepers, but if I was making, if I was going to allow the class in my campaign as, by the way, this is also a free one. It would belong to a certain, uh, church, uh, of some sort. I don't think, I mean, I know it would be a church. So it'd be half divine, half, Arcane is a way I do it, and it would just follow some god or goddess. I haven't quite decided on that situation. That you know, they're uh, they're uh, in their domain. They have the ability to bring back the uh, they have the ability to bring back the dead for maybe a day uh, or a couple days. Like uh, reverent, a reverent, the, the crow. Revenant. What? Peter Revenant. Yes. I probably allow that where the guy is just on a short time limit over then said, I know that's not exactly the answer you're looking for, but it's, it's a weird question. It's not a weird question. It's just not a question I normally think about uh, because I don't run into this, but yeah, I would attach it to a church. I would definitely okay. t- uh, a t- church that can bring back, somebody for x amount of days or until the mission's over then the undead goes back to very much being just dead okay uh i know kai has got a good one for this one hi what about you i know i suck in your uh, in your in your world campaigns whatever you want to call it uh, are there specific orders religious sects uh or individuals you know, that practice this good necromancy? In a way, multiple, because multiple people have gone pragmatic. You, like, I've already gone over the, bi- over the bison surge with the Magistrati Magisi, overseeing the various, um, overseeing the various colleges and spellcasting and cores that engage in necromancy. We've, I've already hinted at the, the Twilight Empire with their with the Rukgani, uh, Rukgani and the Inquisitors, who whose job is to deal with ancestor spirits and and laying the I uh, and purification of spirits to redeem uh, of uh, cr- 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 undead spirits to, re- to redeem them to bring them back to being back to you know back to the to the light back to be able to go to um, their proper afterlife uh, their proper realms of the afterlife. I have various necromancers who work with I who not they're not really necromancers but they're undead hunting specialists who technically are necromancers who have who are willing to use undead I the unintelligent undead to bring down the the intelligent undead who are rogues I have necromancers who are agents of of the I of the afterlife whose entire job is to Collect, I collect the, I collect the intelligent, I rogue intelligent undead who are wandering around. 
I there's a group of necromancers who are not really necromancers, but they're kind of liches who don't like the who realize that they they operate under the mentality of the the ninja principle of too many ninjas I dilutes the pot. So they go out there and hunt down other liches to remove I to re, them and their necromantic agents hunt down other rogue I, I rogue uh, liches who don't who don't um, subscribe to the I uh, to the power of the of the arc lich council that keeps them into keeps them in line i have an, another group of i so you have the work for i the necromancers who are pretty much union bosses who keep the uh, i keep the und, you know the intelligent undead in line so yeah there's actually a whole lot of organizations that look at i that it all comes down to use of how of of how they're uh, how they're being employed and or duration upon what they're used for so it's like yeah there's a lot of good there are a lot of organizations that in my worlds that do actually make use of that and who do kind of self-police each other because of the idea that it doesn't take much for one person to go cr to go crazy with power and let and let an evil person sub suddenly tear open a um a hole into you know a hole into jigoku and you know let mass on you know mass undead corruption come flow, flowing out of it. so or we don't want another phoenix king who opens a, a a hole into the warp we don't want any of that we don't want papa, uh, papa nurgle's uh, blessings we stop that stuff before it happens no tomb lords no nurgles no i uh, so they go out there and yeah we like you uh, we like our dark powers but we like to be able to use them for constructive purposes even though uh, even though there's several countries who would like to crush them all but you know it, after four apocalypses we really don't care anymore okay and uh the uh and shadow kind of already went through his so uh we'll actually start with kai this time uh kai uh how is good necromancy perceived by society in your book is it something that's accepted, something that is misunderstood? You know, is it something that, you know, they see something like this and go, ah, evil, 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 evil. Different. It all comes down to, I hate to call it the, what color, I, what color of energy they're glowing with. And if, you know, if you have the green glowing, the, the green glow of evil, the red glow of, you know, the, the green glow of necromancy, the red glow of um, demonic powers, or that blue glow of arcane power, or that white glow of divine energy we kind of go huh hey bob what's powering that and, and someone goes eh, looks to be um this source of magic then we all kind of know all right so it's one of those things where there there is the visual cue that usually of um yeah we can usually tell when within I, I, when you get within like a 10 foot 15 foot radius of um hey that's put off a, a like but it's blue. It can't be evil. I'm within five. I'm within ten feet of it. I can pretty much tell you that it just reeks of necrotic energy, and they just put an illusion over it. Okay, get, okay, Inquisitor. I, I figured it out. He puts on his little um, his little see-through illusion thing. Yeah, it's totally rigged to be a um, a dark and a dark fill power. You should probably destroy that now. And then he's kind of waved to the um, to the arbalest carrying um, do, uh, doom machine. You know, they pray to God. Who's not actually God, but is is a sniper who's sitting at three hundred feet and is like been spending the last three, five, six rounds, you know, zooming in the um, shot and then just starts, uh, I starts opening up with the anti every, the anti everything gun, also knows an arbalest, and suddenly the undead like oh but it's no no we've already enchanted this thing this thing's designed for murdering the um, undead, and then watching the you know the necromancer I'm so. Oh God! Did my did my server just explode? Oh shit! And yeah, I, it pretty much one of those things where culture kind of looks at the idea that if you have it, uh, if you have it, and you're using it for doing constructive constructive tasks like moving concrete bags, pl I am plowing fields, moving wrecked vehicles off of ancient roads, filling in the roads because you know they can work twenty four seven. Wow! In rain or shine or heat. You know the road might actually get finished on time and under budget 
you know, the budgetary office loves these guys because they actually get the job done. So, yeah, a lot of necromancers tend to have, you know, who are good end up being, you know, actually have degrees in engineering and construction and are actually, or agriculture or deep sea salvage because, man, that ship sank. Man, it's so horrible. We don't have a diver or a sea elf involved. A necromancer shows up on his little barge. I got this. And like 25 skeletons jump, jump off and suddenly yell all your, all your, all your salvage back. How do you do that? Um, my skeletons don't care about pressure and they, and it's, they don't care about air. They just work until it's, until it's fixed. Man, it's so good you're here. I know. I know. Now pay me. Well, pay me. But what if I don't? You join the work crew. Oh, uh, here's my money. Don't kill me. Good. Thank you. And then they go cruising off there. So it really comes down to um, necromancers actually have a really good civil engineering uh, engineering uh, profession in their futures. They're great agriculturalists and, and civil engineers and naval engineers and workforces. Most other classes can't keep up. And I love them for it. And mind you, they're always being watched immensely by everybody else who's kind of looking at you angrily going, uh, like I can't do all the work. My undead can't do skill, skilled crafting, but they can do the manual labor. All right. All right. So it's one of those things where it's like people look at it in this pragmatic sense of um, the world is the world's a magical world of screwed up stuff. You're going to get used to the idea that, yeah, you're going to be working on, alongside these people. Just get used to it. But I don't. But I'm. But I don't like it. It's horrible, and you don't need to eat. Or l let me adjust the pay. The, the pay you're going to pay because I. Because now I got to hire real workers. Thank you for uh, crashing the economy. Where am I going to find workers? Well, you can just hire peasants. Where? Where? We're already at approximately ninety-eight percent workforce utilization, and I'm not going to be able to pay enough to be able to, to, to lure workers from a high-paying job to go do this low-paying manual labor bullshit. Where am I going to get to correct this? You're just going to, where? Where am I finding this, paladin? Where am I finding this overzealous cleric? How am I going to rebalance all of this? You'll just pay out of your, I'm already lowering the price to the point where it's already bare, bare bones because we are in a, a post-apocalyptic economy and we don't have a lot of excess capital floating around. My The undead are an easy to replace source of labor. And I don't care, they fall down and break because I can bring more up from the dead. Well, no necro, no paladin, take your self-righteous bullshit, your lawful goodness, and go fuck yourself with it because I need to feed approximately 40,000 40, people in that town over there. And do you want to work the field, Mr. Paladin? No, I gotta go do paladin work. Good. Now go do paladin work and don't look my way again, or I will add you to the workforce. Now, are these undead union? Uh, you know, coming dude, from you Illinois, stole my freaking line, dude. Uh, <laughs> coming from the state of Illinois, where we understand the the power of the union. Yeah, these, was, that, that's why I held my hand up. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, they're going to get involved. Who says the the Nicaraguans aren't already part of the union? They already have their own union. It would be uh, U D W F, uh, the undead workforce. First off, the undead don't get a vote. It's the necromancers who do. <laughs> <laughs> We don't raise intelligent undead. Intelligent undead will have will have will what pay and representation. We don't give that. You must Where know you... somebody that works at Caterpillar. Um, again, all right. <laughs> again, I it, until we start bringing uh, I intelligent undead, and that starts getting into the ethical grounds. And we don't want to do that. We want to stay completely compliant. And don't worry, our union rates are all set by us necromancers who work. And we don't like bad necromancers because they ruin they ruin our reputation and the union. And that would and that would degrade our power. You don't want to do that, do you? So many bad jokes. So many bad jokes. All right, yeah. moving on. <laughs> Shadow, uh, how is good necromancy perceived in society and games you have run? Uh, with uh, immense suspicion and doubt. 
it's just a matter of time before you slip up, start delving into that stuff. Uh, most games, it, it, you know, other than like D and D or what have you, uh, Call of Cthulhu, etc., would you know lend itself to the argument that it's just a matter of time. Conan, etc. You start doing that stuff, eventually it's going to taint your soul, make you harder and callous and maybe scabby. Um, and uh, eventually you're, you're going to slip up and cross that line. Have you ever had, do uh, you have any examples of that from any games you've had? Uh, God. I, I really can't think of anything that comes to mind, to be honest. It, it's, it, it's, it's a pretty rare thing. I mean, I'll put, you know, uh, some of the necromancy spells out there, you know, for the players to find like his treasure, that sort of thing and tempt them. But they're, they're usually too busy doing other things. Uh, it, you know, as like I said, speak with, speak with dead, great utilitarian spell for just about anybody, but the other stuff, it just, it just doesn't really come up. Huh? I All mean, right. other than my upcoming uh, Venture Brothers uh, slash Supernatural Palladium Beyond the Supernatural hybrid game I'm working on, uh, I'll let you know how that goes because I'm, I'm kind of okay. itching to see uh, if anybody takes the takes the bait and wants to run the the uh, uh, Professor Morpheus or Doctor Morpheus from the Venture Brothers kind of character, but uh, we'll see. Well. Well, I just have one question. Bruce, is that a pickle on your table, or are you just happy to see us? Yeah. I'm very happy to see all of you. <laughs> but I, 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 I sweated too much today at work, and so I have to chew on this thing because I've got cramps in my thigh. I've got cramps in my hand. I'm having a hard time painting. So I'm just I'm going through hell over here. So, yeah, the, the pickle's on the table. Great for uh, replacing your <laughs> He oh just, my God. just pulls it out and of... slaps it on the table. Jeez, Bruce. Yeah, but why is it green? Hey, hey, hey. There... Well, we are talking about good necromancy. Yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, Bruce, how is good <laughs> necromancy perceived in the games that you have played or run? Good necromancy that I've played, it, it typically is looked at as like this is a necessary thing in the, the cities where they have that. There's also uh, a friend of mine from one of my other panels throughout the week has popped in here and he decided to pop in. Hey, how are you doing? Keto simple, keto simple. And if you guys want to learn a little bit about dietary needs, I do have his link right here. Really good man. Really smart. Him and Miss Keto Simple are awesome, by the way. All right. Now that I've given the... Uh, shout out and I, I i want him to make more he's, he's got thousands of viewers for a good reason he's got very good knowledge okay i don't trust anybody in societies to that have white necromancy or have the characters which are actually doing good things with the necromancy it's often perceived that magic is just a a tool like anything else like a hammer like a scaffolding, it just all depends on what you're using it on. And so happens necromancy is used to bring energy back to dead cells, to dead tissue. And many times that is exactly the utilitarian mindset that is held whenever you have these games. A lot of the characters that are in Holofaust will have that exact mindset. Uh, the, the book Fire Sea by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman Great book. It's part of the Deathgate cycle. The city fell apart around them and uh, over the course of time because the Necromancers Guild kept using more and more of the resources and there was really no effort to take care of the living. And so you only had a few nobility families that were left after hundreds of years and then they had thousands of undead. And few necromancers that were, you know, trying to repair the city, but there was nobody there. And sometimes the undead would bump into each other and old echoes of their former life would pop up and they'd start talking. And then they'd realize that they were not where they were supposed to be. 
and then he'd fall silent again trying to go up and down the undead a- or the uh, underground avenues and such. It's a really good book. But Fire Sea is really interesting because it took it to a Chicago level. And I'm going to say that because I'm going to use politics in this description. When I say Chicago level for, for a game, I'm talking about they are throwing so much money at a infrastructure or a resource that everything else will get swept under the rug. And the best case for that would be like a Department of Education. Mm. Well, that's obviously where you have the most embezzlement and most corruption. And, and that's what was happening in this in this story. They've thrown all the money at the Necromancer Guild. And this is an amazing, amazing book because of the fact of how they look at this and how they look at how other places in the city were not built up. Other things were not focused on. They, they didn't even look at nurseries whenever things would collapse. They were too worried about, you know, reinforcing areas where the necromancy was being practiced. And it was a very fun read for that aspect. It's probably the worst book in the Deathgate cycle. But just, the, and, and some of you old timers, you know what book I'm talking about. This thing has a giant black dragon with its neck arching up and out of this big underground magma lake. Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman wrote this back in 1993 or four. And if you get a chance to read it, go ahead and read it. If you have a chance to play in a game that's set in a hollow fost, go ahead and do that. Hey, send me a link for that book or write it down in private chat or just send me a message. At, sure. It sounds okay. interesting. Fire Sea is amazing. Uh, hollow fost is really cool. Hollow fost is part of a bigger, uh, bigger story in the, scarred lands campaign and that in of itself that's that's a whole lot of fun because they took traditional greek mythology and jap anime and combined the two back in 2000 for a campaign setting but oh, grandma i'm sorry to hear that you're not feeling well that's terrible um yeah, give what, us I, what, I, what i would say now those are two fiction examples that i have uh baron but the overall general consensus of games where you actually have me running a campaign where, that involves having a necromancer's guild that's not involved with tomb robbing and breaking open crypts and then taking good tissue and you know from people that want to keep that tissue in the ground instead of harvesting it for their own needs the majority of of people that look at things like that are going to look at it of the mindset like we know the soul leaves the body after death typically the body when it expires about 15 to 28 ounces on on average will actually decrease which is the weight of the soul itself you know, what, 21 grams is that what you said uh somewhere around there i thought it was like 15 ounces to 28 ounces is it 21 grams yeah i thought it was an average of 15 to 28 and i was thinking it was ounces not grams Oh, anyway. no, that's, no, it's grams. Okay. Or, um, I, I know because I just actually uh, read an article on it just, just last week. Okay. Um, but it's... there's there's a weight loss that the body goes through when it expires. And the people in these campaigns typically will infer that the spirit's free. The spirit's gone to where it needs to go. The body is here. It's meant for us to use or it will crumble to dust. And therefore... That's why they feel empowered to utilize this entire grouping of, of, of old tissue, which is no longer got a soul within it. It now has utility and purpose. And if the body is not well enough to where they can animate it and make it move along, they can at least take good parts of it and meld it together in a monoculus to where they have a multi-part golem a necromantic golem, and they can do that. So I just, I, I feel that that typically is the, the mindset of these, of, of the people that would be living in that world. Okay. Uh, Carl, how is good necromancy perceived in your games? Well, like I said before, it'd probably be if I did allow it, and I'm not saying I wouldn't, but if I did allow it, it would be uh, through a church of sub uh, sub time uh, sub 
kind. Uh, for example, have you guys seen, it's an old Heath Ledger movie called The Sin Eater. Um, it's been a while. The, the, the principle of the movie was this guy would go around and uh, eat people's sins. He would do a ritual and eat the sins, and the person on their deathbed normally would die and get a free slate. Uh, they get to go, you know, the heaven. At least that was the overall concept of the sin eater. It would be under that pretense. The church would send somebody out uh, to do something if a village, if a village needs, you know, I, I kind of like where uh, Kai was going, uh, using it as a workforce. You know, if a if something needs to be rebuilt or something of like that nature, and the, the village does not have the right number of people to be, make it work, they call said church or they send a messenger. Uh, yes, Kai. No, no, no. I, I raised my hand because I want to add after you're done. Uh, okay. The church would send a uh, necromancer. The necromancer would go to uh, a graveyard, preferably not human, maybe humanoid, but not human, bring back the dead, uh, bring back the bodies of the dead, and they would accomplish whatever needed to be done um i do like that and i do agree with uh, bruce's concept that just because they're undead doesn't mean their spirits there the spirit could be off somewhere else and you're just using the body as a construct so that's probably how i'd handle it and as for the society they they wouldn't be kicked out of the town but they wouldn't be, you know, the mayor or whoever would not be biting them over to the local uh, shindigs. There'd be no balls in their future, no high-end dinners. They'd be, you know, shunted to some tavern outside of town, uh, and that's how they're handled. They're not unwanted, but not unneeded, but definitely not wanted. Kai, you said you want to jump on something? Uh, no, are you actually done? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Now, I know I went on a nice little tirade and tangent about about there being a guild, you know, guilds and everything. There's one thing I did kind of leave out from all of my conversations about all of this <clears throat> is that while I do tend to run around with I with a concept with a I have stolen from other games a concept of honor and reputation, you know, honor slash reputation and your own standing. Necromancers tend to be having this, because I, I really do, I understand the caste system, and we do deal with, in a fields of society where we're not an egalitarian government that is based on, on everyone being equal. No, As, while there is a necromancer guild, I can guarantee you they're not going to be very high up on the we like you reputation scale. like. You may be a fantastic, renowned necromancer, but because you're always constantly working with the dead, working with dark, with borderline dark powers, no one's going to really um, expect much from you. They're going to look at you, you know, as though you are dirty, as though you are a lower caste. You may be a noble. But no one's going to to treat you with any any form of respect in higher circles because you walk in there, you're wearing the clothes, you act the part, but everyone knows. Everyone's going to look at you funny. There's going to be this 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 feeling that people are just going to treat you like you're kind of a disgusting um, individual because you yeah you're a union boss leading a huge organization of. Um, and you're able to build bridges that you know you have a few people who could tolerate being around you you know one of the you know to do the the high the high skill jobs that you need to be able to to, to, to do your work but they're going to be taken but everyone's going to look at them as though they're tainted by being around you so there is this societal aspect that yeah you're a good necromancer but no one's going to treat you with respect and that kind of helps push in towards why there's not many good necromancers because you got to have a really thick skin to be good and using dark and using dark arts to do good good deeds. You gotta, 
you have people who are doing it because so you're not going to see a lot of lawful good or chaotic good people working as a necromancer, but you're going to see neutral goods, people who go good. I'm good at all costs. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care. Like I'm doing it because this is the best thing that needs to be done. And I don't care what anyone thinks about me, aka neutral. And because chaotic will be like, I don't give a fuck, whatever, blah 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 blah. And, and lawful, I don't. Er, why are you just? Why do you disrespect me? And so you're going to see a lot of people who are more going, I chose this profession. I don't care. I'm a garbage man. I'm a sewer line worker. I, I'm, I'm doing the dirty deeds that, 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 that society needs done. Yeah. No one's going, yeah. If I ever ask, if anyone ever asks, what job do you do? And I go, I'm a necromancer. And people go, oh, oh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And then they go on and you just kind of go, ah, fuck you. I, fuck you. I, I, I fixed the highway. I don't give a shit. I, I've got a nice house. That, I've got a nice house and a good pickup truck, and I go on vacation every three months. What the fuck do you do? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go fuck yourself. I got a nice job. But, but so there is that cultural asset that you're going to be constantly looked down upon, and no matter how hard you work, the more you keep functioning with necromancers, you're going to be living with that horrible stigma. It's going to follow you everywhere. Because unfortunately, you may be the best goddamn worker in the world, but somewhere out there, some jackass is out there going, "I don't want to go burn down a village with my necromantic army." At which point, you're just like, "My motherfucker, could you just not?" Because you know, some of us, had, some of us had to, are trying to earn a, legit, a, a legitimate living here, and yeah. A necromancy does mean you never have to say goodbye to your pet. That's right. Go ahead, Shadow. Uh, would you guys consider, those of you who read um, Hellblazer, the comic book, not so much the movie Hellblazer with Keanu Reeves, to be a good necromancer? Uh, John yes. Constantine as a necromancer. He's made enough deals with the de uh, demons and outside influences to basically be able to rock that. I don't see him personally as one, but I see him having the possibility of becoming one if the chips were, as he would put it, the chips are down, it's time to crack on. I I would actually say that I would see him as more of, he, he is the, he sees himself more as a gatekeeper than a than a good or bad thing. He he is the he is the gate that they have to come through. He is the wall that they must penetrate in order to come across. And he I think he has more truthfully I think he has more paladin qualities than he actually does necromancer qualities just for the simple fact of he will hold that wall at all costs and he will let himself be brought down to whatever level that needs to be brought down to in order to protect the innocent. So I only read the first 10 or 20 comic books back in the day, and it's been literally decades, you know, since they first came out. So I was just oh, curious. Oh, God, yeah. It's nice, though, to see Sting being a, uh, Sting as a comic book hero. Um uh, I, I got into an argument. That's who Constantine was modeled after. The I, I got into an argument with someone last week who said it was David Bowie, and I had just got through reading otherwise. No, but David Bowie is um, David Bowie. I did Bowie is um, Sandman and Lucifer. So no. <laughs> yeah, no, Constantine. I, the uh, the author, the guy who created Constantine, said he was a, a police fan, and he made him look like Sting. That's what I read, but I don't know where. Uh, I, I couldn't quote exactly where I read it, but that, that that's what I thought. I, I was kind of a police fan more than a, a Bowie fan. Not going to you know, say anything bad about Bowie, but uh, just kind of before my time. So, and I'm not trying to cut here on your questions, but on the same question, uh, same question, but with a different person. So using Constantine, uh, Jim Butcher's Dresden. He 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 did net, uh, uh, did it in one book. He brought back uh, a T Rex. I mean, how many spells does it take for a person to actually say yes? I'm a necromancer. Is it one and done, or is it a career choice? 
I think it would have to be a career choice, except for in the case of uh, Dr. Orpheus from the Venture Brothers, because he just took the title because all the other ones had been taken. Yeah. Kai? I would kind of look at, at um, Dresden doing that as more of a, a, a more of a large anime object than it, uh, I, and then actual necromancy due to the fact that it was fossilized and therefore there's no bone for that to properly animate. So that really is just um, that, that's semantics now. Yeah, and, that's curious. And, and with Constantine, I think he's more of your lawful neutral warlock who's just sitting back and laughing at it. And huh, I'm going to do this like, no, nah, man. The rules say this. Uh, what do you mean? Now uh, rules say this. He's not a paladin. He's just a really, he's just a really asshole. I uh, rules lawyer. He doesn't give a shit about what's going on. God. I would love, well, I would love to play Constantine in a uh, in a campaign. It's just. Uh, anyways, getting back to your topic. I'm sorry. Well, the the I, I'm actually going to chime in on that. Is is that that. I think what it has to do a lot with is intent. Intent of what is going behind it. So, for for instance, if there if there was a necromancer that, because I really haven't chimed in on a lot of the stuff here, but you know, for instance, if there's a necromancer and there's a sea of thousands of orcs coming, and he goes, "We only have a, a city guard of thirty. We can't repel, you know, firepower of that magnitude. And he goes, all right. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, bed knobs and broomsticks, you know, all of a sudden all the, <laughs> you see where yes. I went. Yeah. Yes. You see where I went. All of a sudden, all of the the bones and whatnot of, of, of former heroes and uh, of pets and animals and horses all go out to the battlefield to stop them, you know, was what happened in bed knobs and broomsticks. Was Not that good. technically necro was that necromancy? Well, considering it's a lady for murder, she wrote, you know, one could uh, wonder. Yes, but with only one requirement, put grandpa back when you're done. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing is that, it, what I'm saying, though, and I'm using that kind of as the as the reason behind it, as the intent. It was not the intent to take over. It was the intent to keep the living safe, to keep people from getting hurt, to keep people from dying. Kind of like in uh, Lord of the Rings? Yeah. I mean, those weren't. I mean, those are spirits, but yeah, I, I'll give yeah. that. But I mean, um, it, it's but that's that's where I'm coming from on on whether or not you know you know the the true you know if someone uses a, a necromancy spell if that makes them a necromancer, I would say no. With the caveat of it does have to come down to the overall intent. You know, it, it's the intent of everything that is that is being used for you know are, is it being used for power and, and to further your personal gain no is it being used to protect the innocent i would say that that would be definitely a a no on on uh being called a necro a, a straight up necromancer you're doing what needs to be done in order to keep people safe Bruce, what what are what's we, we've all kind of lodged in on this? What about you? Well, what was the original question that you started with this round, Eric? Well, it was actually one that that Connell uh, posed. Does one necromant one use of a necro quote unquote necromancy spell make you a necromancer? No, just like one prayer. To your god of choice does not make you a cleric. I think I think that just because you cast the spectral hand, that doesn't make you a necromancer. Just because you cast ghoul touch, that doesn't make you a necromancer. What makes you a necromancer is a devotion. 
is the dedication, is the single-mindedness to exploring what power still lays within the flesh and how you can manipulate the energies to get it going again. That's what makes you a necromancer. You just blowing a spell in combat could be magic missile, could be fireball. You chose cool touch. Okay, big deal. No biggie. Oh, you chose spectral hand because you can send that thing out there to, to tap somebody and uh, make them do a saving throw. Awesome. But I honestly think that what makes you a person, a necromancer, is the focus to do more with the dead flesh. I'm not talking about sexually more. I'm talking about somebody wants to do more where they want to reanimate it. They want to control it. They want to puppeteer it. They don't want to get their hands dirty. Maybe maybe the undead that they're going to create is going to do a, uh, you know, a couple dirty jobs for them. I don't want to be digging in the dirt, but I can supervise these six zombies as they go dig up a septic tank. That's pretty cool. I've got my, you know, my margarita, and my umbrella, and I'll just... Got, I got these six guys working for me for the next six hours. That's awesome. I'm almost a real caster because I could almost keep them up all day on one cast. Awesome. I, uh, neck romancer. <laughs> um, I, uh, I can't help it, man. That's fucking great. You know, I go. This is a little bit of a side note, but it kind of goes along with this. I um I go camping every so often at the place where they f filmed Ernest Goes Camping uh, down in Tennessee. And I've been trying to find a person that kind of looks like Ernest so I can put the outfit on him. And so late, late, like 3 o'clock at night, I can just see him walking around the campsite uh, talking to Vern. You you shake your head, Baron, but you know there's a part of that that's fucking hilarious. I already got a friend who could rig up a golf cart with a uh, controller so it just drives itself. Moving on. Oh, uh, you're no fun. I think it's a great idea. All right, so we'll we'll start with Bruce on this one. Uh, all right. So, uh, what is the role of the undead uh, in in a good line campaign? Are the spirits willing to aid the living, or are they temporary manifestations uh, created to protect the vulnerable? You know, what what role does the undead it, it all, kind of? It all depends on how the undead role. was raised. Is the undead raised as just dead tissue and and flesh, and it ambles around like it was kind of puppeteered because the soul's gone? Or did you raise the skeleton from 200 years ago that was in the, the the Confederate cemetery, and therefore now this you know the soldier is wanting vengeance, and he's like, ah, let's go get him. I can't stand them blues, and uh, you know he wants he wants to go and you know finish his job. He wants to go finish finish the job, uh, literally. And, you know, I, what, what type of, of campaign is this? Is it how, how are you raising the undead? Are you keeping are you tethering the soul within the spirit or are you puppeteering it? OK, yeah, that's, that's the big question. I mean, a lot of campaigns I played in with good necromancers, the soul's gone. They make sure the soul's nowhere near the corpse. Oh, he's on another plane. OK, well, shit. I mean, other than Jacob there, uh, Bruce, how many people have you had in your campaign say, hey, I want to go play with dead things? Well, it's really not my campaign. I catch the reference there, Baron. <laughs> it's really not my campaign. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Jesus. No, I, I, I play a necromancer in another game and I really enjoy the shit, but I I can't wait to get higher levels so I can actually do stuff like craft undead by the like tens. Like, all right, we've got our labor force. Cool. Guys, go build me a chair over there and I'll watch you the rest of the day. Thanks. Um 
I, I, I want that. I know that sounds lame, but you have to have your, set your, your goals small at first. Don't have big goals. Uh, okay. How about, uh, Kyle, what, what is the role of the undead in, in your campaign? If, if I'm going to put press this out here, if you did allow it, because you've said it twice now, so I'll go ahead and press that for you. Uh, you know, you know, are the spirits willing? You know, are they just temporary manifestations to protect the vulnerable? I think they're a temp, temp, uh, the temp, yeah. it, they'll only be here for a short period. I, I think the spirits under the right situ, uh, situation would agree to it. I would, you know, would very much be, uh, that would be have to be a thing. And the hard line is, as I said, no humans. And well, okay, as I'm thinking about it, no heroes, no good people, no innocent people per se, you, you know, if you can't use the orphan kids to rebuild the orphan, I, I'm sorry, but that's wrong. Well, maybe a little, eh, I don't know. Um, I'll get back to that thought. Um, but no, there's just no kids. You know, I have a very simple rule in my life when dealing no with women, people. no kids. Yeah. A very simple rule in my life. It, it, when it comes to collecting payment, no women, no children. And, um, adventure brothers reference. I, I did not know that, but, uh, but yeah, the hard line is no innocent. You can't just go, Hey, I heard that your kid died last week. You mind if I put him to the workforce? You know, there's not going to be any fucked up, uh, Oliver twist scenario. Well, wouldn't that, wouldn't that also include, you know, potentially 90% of all the people in the graveyards and, and the dead in general, that's not my problem. That's the person who wants to play the necromancer that has to find the right, you know, supplies. My, as a DM, I get to say yes or no. If I say yes, the rest of the work's on you. If you want to play a necromancer that's not good, by, like I said, a gray, true neutral necromancer, the work on finding bodies or supplies to make your whatever work, it's on you. Now, if there was a massive battle in a kingdom, two kingdoms down the road from you, uh, and it's humans and orcs, go for it. Collect all the orcs that you can get, all the orc bodies, you know. Merry Christmas. But no women, no children, no innocent. Now, that's that would be my hard so, line. So I, I will I will point out you said no human. That means the elves, the halflings. The you know half orcs, the half you know half elves. Yeah, I, I see. All those are that. fair game. No, no, no. You I said human. Yeah. You said um, humans. Human. So therefore, they are all fair game. Just, well, just where to, to the Catholic part of me is telling <laughs> me that the only person that has a soul is humans, anyways. So the rest is free game. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> we'll get away from the Catholic here and move yeah, I have to the time. Hold on, hold on. I gotta say something that make will make Jack happy. That so there we go. Okay. So, so Kai, yes. I know you, you, you've been chomping on this one for a minute because you've been sitting there trying to oh, oh, go for it. Unload. Raise the question one more time. Just make, it, make sure I get it right. What is the role of the undead in your game? Uh are they Temporary manifestations? Are they willing to aid the living? Were they created to or brought forth to, you know, protect the vulnerable? How do they kind of work into the campaign or into the world for you? They are not. To, I most of them do not do it temporary because they are because they are an expensive investment upon of capital into a into a resource. They are not. I until they work back at least they're. The amount of money you spend to raise them, they have to stay. They have to, or it's a losing proposition. This is a job, after all. Then again, you do have some who just uh, who just raise the most cheapest, bare bones, lowest uh, lowest grade skeletons or zombies, and use them for things like I don't know. Uh, oh wait, I do know. I know one person who uh, who was a good necromancer, who used his. His zombies as literally a communication device, a cheap, a cheap one, 
I had one bit Morse code system of communication because all the zombies had to do is look to the next tower and see the next zombie. And, and the zombie raises their, sorry, the next skeleton, the zombie raises their hand and then puts it down. They they transmit that and then put it down. They're mirroring, they're mirroring. Who needs the, the torches of Gondor? You know, you know the, the warning beacons are lit. No, you have you, you have zombie. Uh, you have skeletons with two flags doing semaphore, and communicating that way. It's like all you need to do is look at the at your first skeleton, and say, "Here's your or I. If this, do that." Which is all. Which is what most commands are. It's like it's like a computer program at this point. It's just simply all right. If you see me. I, I, your necromancer, your communication specialist, who sits there with two flags, and if I go into a certain combination, a uh, combination, you mirror it, and the next zombie, and the next skeleton zombie down the road, I, I, in the next box, you know, five, four miles down the road, sees the flags go up in a certain pattern, he mimics it, and suddenly you have a primitive, a primitive telegraph communication system using entirely undead, and the undead are constantly awake; they don't sleep, they're not paying. There's never going to be a moment where you go, you know what? I'm going to play cards or dream about women. I'm not going to do my job. And, you know, the communication system falls apart because somebody was off, you know, daydreaming about how they, about something. You've got mindless undead whose only job is to be your communications network. And, you know, most people are, are, are going to walk by and they're going to see, you know, in this tower, a dead corpse sitting there in a tower, not doing anything. They go, eh. Some guy died in the uh, in the apocalypse, not realizing that guy that undead is that skeleton is actually an undead who's just waiting for the signals to, to, to arrive so he can send communications rapidly back and forth. Who needs pigeons? You have the undead. I uh, you have the undead internet, uh, uh, internet happening, and so it, it's like when when you had players who figured out that your half hit die skeletons are crap, but they're dirt cheap, and I can have lots of them. And I can have lots of them intact and running at all times. And, I, and once I give them orders, I can walk away and never come back to them. There's zero maintenance. And if I lose one, it's, cool. it, it, it's a few bucks to replace it. It's the cheapest component. It, and and watching players sitting, I, I'm trying to sit here, the player explains to me how to do this. Sure. Or I've had other players go, why do I hire horses to, to run my millstones? I have undead who walk it. Who walk on on the big trebuchet hamster wheels and grind eternally? I have it's industrialization through the undead. I have it, it's perpetual motion through necromancy. It's so beautiful because your skeleton produces the same horsepower as a human. Okay, and they don't sleep. Okay, they're it's the horse gets tired. This does not. I can run a, a human powered paddle wheeler. With undead as my motor, I don't care, and I'm like, like, brilliant, brilliant. You don't need to feed them. They don't need to sleep. They work eternally, and they have one job, which is simply, hey, necromancer, yell at them to to bring power down to half speed, like bring it down to a, to a walk. You know, when your engines are dead stop, walk, times times two move, times three move, times four move. And, and so you're sitting here with almost the the bells on an on an engine going ding 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 go to full power at which point the necromancer looks at the skeletons and go spin your paddle wheel and goes starts churning up water as the boat goes it goes much faster oh wow undead nuclear power it's I undead nuclear engines go for it and watching most people go that's so brilliant isn't it oh we're rowing our ship with undead uh, uh, with undead crewers who never get tired. Will be going at full ramming speed the entire length of the Mediterranean. You be, you're cruising at two, three knots. We're cruising at ten. What's your eye? Uh, what are you doing? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We're getting we're getting somewhere. We are I we are modernizing naval trade. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, we're making back our money. And so therefore, I guess I guess I'm used to a much more pragmatic um, look use of undead for they're just tools to be used for society to do its work and therefore you're you're more humane to animals because you're not working them to death 
you're, you're not, you don't want to engage in a slave trade. These people only live long, by long, vibrant lives. They're already dead. Their bodies are useless. They're just rotting. What are you going to do? Burn them? No. Put them Give to them work. a proper burial and be done with them? Oh, right. Yeah, right. What are you going to do? They're, they're going to eat up. Ta- I think they eat up valuable real estate in a graveyard, sitting there for the rest of eternity. We go and we go over once in a while and go. Well, here lies Grandpa, and then move on. And then when hey, and, uh, and what? Wait for an evil necromancer to come in and go. This beautiful graveyard is all here. My undead army, raise up! No, either cremate them, and, and you get the choice upon on death of do you want to be cremated so that way your body is useless and you contribute nothing else to society. Or you continue to be, to be valuable and functional. Most people choose cremation, by the way. But a few people kind of go, I want to be useful even after death. And we and we just churn them over into the I I over into that. And plus, when an invading army, we bury our dead, we raise the other uh, the other guy's dead. Because we don't really care about their uh, their country and their people. They invaded us. Their their dead becomes our troops. It's so much more efficient this way. Hey Kai, yes. you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, eternal. Uh, don't the bones, <clears throat> excuse me, eventually wear down? If it, you know, you gotta do some maintenance upon them. You know, some healing, some some restoration. You know, if you do, look like any good like, like any good machine. If you don't maintain it, it breaks down. And some people are, and some people get it's cheap. But I look at it as a small amount of preventative maintenance maintains them for a much, much longer time. And you know what? You might invest in, if this is a good, if you raise a strong undead, powerful skeletons, powerful zombie, you might invest in, you know, spells to prevent the flesh from rotting or replace metal with bone. I was like, I had bone with metal so that way it lasts longer. And you just keep them functioning, and yeah, you know, eventually I'm going to have a Necron army. I don't give a crud. I'm going to have my Necron army. I don't. I, hey, yeah. hey, Kai. Another thing. Have you ever heard of the Will Body Program? It sounds right up your alley. Um, instead of you know putting the burden onto your family, you can uh, go online, look up the Will Body Program, and sign your body away. That way, when you die here on Earth, they'll just cart you away. Your family won't have to worry about all the expenses. Uh, yeah. both, my, both my parents. Well, excuse me, my mom did that, and uh, I've already signed up as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you there, you know, in the in the uh, CIA, you know, uh, slab area where they, you know, turn us into, what was it, uh, what was that movie with where they brought back the soldiers as, like, cyborg zombies? Hey, I, 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 am, a, I am a 100% t- totally okay with, you know, with, oh, shoot, what, are, what, I am. What are the atomic? I what are the flesh the, the flesh automatons in, in 40k called again? Um, servitors. Servitors. I'm totally okay with that. It's horrifying, but you know it's continued use. They don't have true necromancy, so they have to use that. I prefer necromancy in, in fantasy games, but you know cyber zombies are work just as well in more modern senses. I know I'm ethically horrible, but. I'll pray for you. Yeah. All right. And last but not least, Shadow, uh, what are the roles of the undead in your games? Uh, they are you know, victims. Are they... they are abominations, and they are monsters. That's it. <laughs> okay. So, no? Uh, yeah, I'm just... Uh, you know, I got to draw the line somewhere, and uh, I, I've run too many evil campaigns and seen where it's gone. I ran a 25-year-long evil campaign, and I, I'm pretty sure I still have a crap ton of atoning to do for it. This is the stuff I let my players get away with. Yeah, probably shouldn't have done that. Okay. So that does kind of round out my questions for the night. Uh I, I am going to take one liberty. Uh, the that uh, Janet, who I don't know if he's still, if she's still in here or not, and Bruce, uh, will be looking at the movie Constantine this Monday. Ooh! So uh, we we brought that up, and I was like, "Ooh, that's a good, you know, pigeonhole. Get it in there, and <clears throat> yeah, getting that in there and whatnot." 
so yeah, uh, the uh, make sure that you know you do uh, do uh, uh, check them out on Monday uh, on Bruce's channel. Uh, it was a very good movie. Uh, in fact, they're doing a second one, from what I'm hearing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so the uh, in uh, the spirit of finding out what everyone's got going on, uh, Bruce. Besides this Monday with Constantine, what do you got coming up this weekend? Well, actually, that's a that's a good question. I'll be putting Janet's link for her YouTube channel in the uh, the chat here in just a minute. But we were we are doing a shit show tomorrow night, and uh, that's quickly becoming one of my favorite streams uh, to do because I I I can drop my political content in my streams with my friends where they don't appreciate political content. And uh, we can we can save that for Friday night, which she loves political content. And then Saturday night or Saturday, I've got a game over here. Uh, Chris is running his campaign where I get to play my necromancer, neck romancer. And uh, then after that, Kai and I are going to have a discussion. Probably going to talk about domain play and rogues and how you should always try to strive for that in every campaign <laughs> and not fucking quit after ten sessions. <laughs> and not pigeon them whole. I uh, pigeon them into a hole where they only get to be cool once every three sessions because that's the only time you ever throw your fucking traps or lock doors at them. Oh, what that's are you here for? I'm here to stab one guy once every four, every two to four sessions, and then I get to unlock a door. And the rest of the time, I sit here and jerk off because because ro because rogues having skills is a bad thing. Rogues doing anything outside of stabbing one person from shadows once time per per combat is a bad thing. And rogues doing anything useful is a bad thing. Rogues are just here to be pulled to be Soviet mine detectors Stop. and and open doors because we are shit tier horrible GMs. Blah blah. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, back. Tell you how you really feel about it. Oh. Give me more time. Not to, not Saturday. Time. Check that out on Saturday. Other than that, uh, those are the big things we got coming up Friday, Saturday, and and, uh, and Monday. I might do a paint stream on, on Sunday afternoon. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens over at LOM's channel. And uh, we'll be, you know, pissing in the wind until then. Duck. Talk to you later. All right. Carl, what do you got coming up this weekend? Mm, this weekend. This weekend. Well, Friday, I will be off camera, most likely playing uh, Warhammer Fantasy, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, Saturday, as Bruce said, I will be hanging out with him and the other um, Dead Knights over uh, on his channel as his buddy and my buddy runs his evil <laughs> campaign. I'm kind of evil light in that one. Uh, then Sunday, 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 we will be talking about Howard the Duck, the yeah. movie. Because this month awesome. we are doing guilty pleasures. And my guilty pleasure, one of many, is Howard the Duck. You know the movie that brought you such things as uh, duck boobs? We'll be talking about that. Wow. Okay. Uh, hi, is there any other insights that you have for the, the Saturday stream? The, the, the Kai's amusing that we're going roll. to hear. Look, I don't plan ahead, I roll with it. So, like, I just write weird things every once in a while, and then we talk about weird, about even weirder stuff. So, yeah. All right, if you want to see some of those weird things that he does right, you can check that out on Bruce's Discord. He has an entire channel dedicated to the the things that go through his head, so to speak. Yep. So, and, and, and he is, uh, yeah. Uh-oh. Wait, what was this guy... The answer, to that, the answer to that would be I'm not available on Mondays. I'm not available on Thursday. I'm not available every other Saturday. 
Um, it would have to be after six o'clock, and I would prefer to be done about ten on the days that I'm free, which are not. But everybody else is busy. So I most of the time. So well, they want to start at you know ungodly late avocado time, ungodly early early avocado time. Or ungodly late um, European time, and I can't make those usually. And I'm definitely not, and I, def, I definitely can't do anything on spider time, aka Australia. So, <laughs> no, that's rock bear time. Ah, uh, nah, spiders. Most of my most of my uh, most of my Aussie friends are usually spider lovers, so it's all spider lovers. Uh, They're yeah. all drow. Well, they, you know, know Australia is uh, just drow, just start surface drow, right? Yeah, well, well I see, I, I have built to that. I have a very good buddy of mine who's in New Zealand. So you've got you've got Kiwi time, and then you kind of got the 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 fucking Aussie time, as he likes. Fucking, to Aussie, <laughs> fucking Aussie time is my favorite time because I used to have a lot of friends back when I used to work third shift who were all Aussies because they're the only ones who were gaming when I was off work. <laughs> all so right, I, I made that. far too many spider friends. <laughs> No, no, what do you got coming up this weekend? Well, right after this show, uh, little guy and I are finishing up a, a craft video for our friend uh, uh, Fritz over at uh, GM's Alcove. And then uh, tomorrow I should be finishing up my review of the TSR 2nd Edition Dark Sun box set. And then hopefully I'll be able to bang my way through the rest of Dark Sun uh, prepping for a review of almost everything Ravenloft uh, between September 15th and Halloween. I'll be doing a crap ton of Ravenloft reviews uh, along with the usual stuff. We're also showing off a bunch of Starship miniatures uh, for September. Otherwise, uh, you can find me Saturday night on the Sci-Fi Shadow Chat where we'll be doing part two of Eldritch Horror and then uh, I don't know what uh, what else we're doing the rest of the month. But I right, finally yeah. got the little guy into a into a live stream with me, and uh, he wanted to do a part two. So stay tuned. All right, and in uh, just double checking my calendar here. In two weeks, uh, we are going to have the cap, uh, the crafting gamer with us here. Uh, we are going to be play testing his uh, his his game his game. And and I know that Kai and I believe Jade have been working with him behind the scenes, kind of helping tweak a few things. But uh, I know the rest of us are looking forward to grabbing it by the horns, twisting its head off and going, Oops, did I do that? I love blood. I love blood. <laughs> yeah. That would, be one the, that would be one of the few times you see me play a paladin. I, I gotta, I gotta say something. We had a, a question in chat earlier. I started, and I'm gonna bring it back. The so soul is nearby, and a necromancer casts animate dead. Could a soul that's floating around possess one of the walking corpses? Corpses, and I'll start with uh, Kai first. Yes, yes, it's a vessel. It just, it's waiting for a possession. Of course, it is. Which only leads to, ha, you're done. I'm going to release you undead. At which point the undead looks at you and goes, I don't think so, Bob. <laughs> and Bob goes, but I, you're supposed to be my less undead. I, I'm sorry, Dave. That doesn't, I can't do that. And then the undead walks off. And then suddenly you're going, oh, shit. Did I accidentally create an intelligent undead? As, as the undead's walking off, you know, double barreling, double barreling figures at you as he walks away into the dead. In the distance, he goes, I'm going to lose my license, aren't I? <laughs> I, I lost my, certif my Fort Trent certification. Fuck. Wow. Connell. So I mean, by the rules of uh, possession... And let's, let's go with but most of the rules I've read about possession. There's no reason a spirit could not hijack that body. I mean, it's possessing it, it by using the game mechanic. So, yeah, I would allow it. Um, 
I I would boy would I be fucking with the player. Boy would I be fucking with the player if that happens though. Yes. <laughs> Fuck with them. Fuck with them. They deserve it. <laughs> All of a sudden, the the undead realizes he can't get too far away because he needs the the magic that the necromancer is putting off in order to keep possession of the body, and and now you have the the quirky sidekick of the now necromancer that's nothing but throwing all kinds of oh my of, god oh what what a twist. <laughs> It's like, it's, it's like it's like an it's like a uh, intelligent sword or intelligent weapon now. <laughs> oh my god! No! 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 Go back oh. to the books. Go back to comics to Death in the Family, where the Joker beats the ever living shit out of uh, uh, Jason Todd. Right? Yes. Where he's yes. dead, and the Boston, the dead man Boston uh, character jumps in just to give Batman some shit for a while. That would be amazing. Ooh, ooh. Yes, lady. I do love Gungrave. That is an excellent series. I love that one. And yes, I, I'm a total fan of sci-fi necromancy. There's so many fun ways to do it, and I'm okay with them all. Garrett. So, so I would so say yes. Fun. Go ahead. I would say yes, but they are not considered a follower under the follower rules that would be normally kind of uh, they're under an intelligent undead being that they possess them of their <laughs> own free will uh <laughs> the dm the dm now controls that npc oh god and it now and it now becomes a instrument of whatever the dm wishes so much I, victory so much I victory can, i can see that thing of like going Ha, I, Wait a minute, but but uh, I don't see how that would work there, Baron, because the, the 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 body wouldn't be animated if it weren't for the necromancer. Therefore, the necromancer should have control. Wouldn't it be like an opposed check of some sort? It would be an opposed check at first. Like a will save or a will. will and, 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 and as for my answer, why is the soul even there as opposed to going to its uh, destined heaven or hell afterlifey existence? Unless it's already a ghost or something like that, in which case it would probably not want the body being more powerful on its own. I could, I could bounce off this one. Go okay. for it. If it's a chaotic battlefield where this, for, where this happens at, some of the souls may not be actually been reaped yet or, or gone off to their afterlife yet, but they may be confused and wandering around waiting for their for somebody to shepherd them off to the afterlife, aka last rites, giving you know giving them their. Um, you know, cuss, you know, all the power the things. So, or, uh, or, or dead like me. Yeah, or it could simply be like, why would a, I? Why would a ghost why, I want to be able to interact with the undead? I, I you know, that's a body because the ghost wants to be able to, you know, like I like being a ghost. I like, this, I like this, but I hate the fact that I can't touch anything. I hate the fact that I, like, sure, I can pass everything. I know everything. I can pass. It's great. But I kind of want to be able to manipulate things again, and so temporarily goes. Whoop! I'm now in this in this body. Plus, here's the fun part. And like you're you're a happy necromancer, you know. You're Dave necromancer walking around going, "I'm a big dumb necromancer." And then you catch you you, you raise your 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 fifteen hit dice the for us, Dan, who's like you know Titan Titanicus, the old dead uh, the undead behemoth, and you don't know what what ghosts are running around here because. Most of us who play necromancers don't spend time, you know, prepping the battlefield, looking around to see what ghosts and spirits are in the area. No, we're kind of like, you know, short-sighted and we're kind of ignorant idiots because our GMs don't help us much. But so, you know, we raise the we raise our Titanicus the Undead, and then suddenly, you know, you know, the dark, you know, the, the dark king asshole who's been, you know, you know, sitting here in, in Castle Evilstein looking at the battlefield the, from, the, from the ruined battlements guy goes, I I want that body and floats over there and, whoop, and you're like, don't worry, there's no major spirits. And also, you know, Titan Titanicus, the, the skeleton turns and goes, thank you for my new body. I shall rule the world now. And it goes walking off. And you're like, and Dave once again goes, oh, motherfucker, this is like the second one. And... <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I was already on probation, not again. <laughs> And, and, and I mean, meanwhile, like almost like Mecca, Mecca Nixon, I shall now raise taxes and reestablish a kingdom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> no, this isn't good for my career. <laughs> uh, okay. For all other questions, please take them to Bruce on this coming Saturday's Raven with St. Ray. Uh, Ranting with Saint Rant. Uh, ranting yes. with Saint Pi of the Assisi. That's right. <laughs> Not nice to call him a sissy. A thesi. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We're talking about other people here. <laughs> yes. He sees things. He sees them twice because he has two eyes. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to so create Bob the most thing time. Since we're going down this mad hole of what the fuck <laughs> is <laughs> Ash from uh, Ash from Evil of Darkness a necromancer because he messed up on the spell and brought back all the you undead. You the answer when you asked it. Of course he's not. No, he's not. He's against it. He just he mispronounced something. That's I, it. But, he, but, but what about the evil clone that came through the mirror? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're good, Ash. I'm bad, Ash. Oh, God. <laughs> Welcome back to the land of the living. Grab a shovel and get digging. All right. I know what movie I'm picking for Halloween. Thank you for coming. All right. <laughs> Hail to the king, baby. The Hail. king asshole of hell. Castle evil sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, and of course his his unwitting his unwitting idiot sidekick Dave the I uh, Dave the incompetent uh, incompetent necromancer. Oh, <laughs> oh. Remember his body. What did you his know body, before you were a necromancer, Dave? I was an accountant. <laughs> why did you Why did you raise Titanicus the skeleton? Because I was because I thought I was powerful. <laughs> but now, unfortunately, because I could. Unfortunately, now Nix is being reelected for his third term. Fuck! <laughs> you will not impeach me again. <laughs> this, this, bo again. this body's a necromatic powerhouse. I is. <laughs> oh, hey, Bruce. Uh, uh, you said something earlier, and I wanted to respond to it. I would love to have a political conversation with you any day of the week, online or elsewhere. I don't mind it. What about Jack? No, no, no. That is too much. <laughs> so, so, it's not that I remember wait, Jack. It's just, or another one for Jack. No, he's just too much Fox and Friends for my taste. The, here's the thing, Bruce. I think that you should have him on the shit show tomorrow night. Um, I'll ask Janet. Uh, I, I, I know the, the start of the show... I'm going to request her just let me have the floor for a little bit because I've got about five minutes of Dr. Fauci on no the problem. phone confessing to what he did to Rachel Maddow. And I'll give you guys, you guys are going to get a little sneak peek. So there I was, Daddy Fauci, and I had Rachel Maddow sitting on my lap. Okay, that's enough. That's enough of a preview. That's all I needed. <laughs> that's all I needed. So, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We definitely do appreciate you. We will see you guys next week. Thank you for spending the time. Happy you trails. Have. Yes, take care. If, uh, and by the way, just another shout out for Keto Simple. Uh, if you have questions... Subscribe to him. He's 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 been doing this for a long time. He's a guru on it. And we, as table breakers, will be back here next week, same bat time, same bat channel. Bye, Don't everybody. Play with dead things. Don't play with dead things. <laughs>